Hey guys, how's everybody doing? I'm um, just going to do a uh, 150 hour review or so on the Mahindra 1626. Um, I got this in May of 2019 and uh, here we are going into January. So put about 150 hours on it. Um, it is the uh, tractor loader backhoe combo with the skid steer quick attach uh, front forks as well. Um, makes it really good for firewood and um, getting logs out of the uh, the woods and all that. So I'm going to go through some of the things that uh, Mahindra's changed on uh, the 1626 compared to the 1526 and then go into some of the things that I like and some of the things that I don't like. Um, so the first thing that you'll see is the bucket is changed. It's a little different than the 1526 they uh what they did was i guess they had some complaints that the width of the bucket was not covering the back tire tracks so when you would back drag uh, you would get the tire tracks and um it was causing some people some, some to gripe a little bit uh, so what they did was they actually angled the back of the bucket and you can kind of see here um, the bucket kind of has a, a jet out there on the left hand side so the back of the bucket is actually smaller than the front of the bucket, so you don't have a consistent volume throughout. Um, it seems to, to work. Um, really haven't noticed anything off with it. Um, next thing that they did was they updated the front headlights. Um, they had, uh, I think these are LEDs, um, but different look than the uh, previous more rectangular 1526 design that they had. Um, two of the biggest improvements or changes, I guess I should say, from the 1526 is they have put the loader joystick on the fender there by your right thigh. Uh, previously, it had been up on the loader over here, and they moved it down here uh, to be closer and, and more ergonomic. Um, next is this M Comfort seat. Um, so I will say right off the bat and kind of jump the gun that I do love the seat. It's very comfortable. Uh, the armrests are a huge um, help and uh, definitely helps you, you get, go longer trying to get more stuff done. And those are the, the things that they've changed. Obviously the, um, the disconnect's a little bit different here. So you have four hydraulic lines that are color coded. So a little bit different setup than the 1526 given that the loader joystick has moved to the, to the fender here. Um, so, like I said, I've got about 150 hours, about 147 hours or so on the dial. Actually, 147 on the dot. Wow. Um, it is the hydrostatic transmission. It is a three-speed, so it has a, a low, medium, and high. Uh, I chose this over the gear drive just because of the um, what I would be doing. It's a lot of loader work. Uh, like I said, I do a lot of... Um, tree removal you can actually see a tree there so um, logging and all that kind of stuff just makes it easier with the hydrostat um, I'm not doing any ground engaging implements I don't have any tilling or plow that I'm doing um, so it really didn't make much sense and it's just a nice to have um, that is another thing that they changed up so the hydrostatic pedal is uh, say a, a hybrid design between a side to side and a typical treadle pedal so the linkage is actually recessed under the floorboard and you can see that this has a wider pedal here that you push forward to go back and then a smaller pedal by your heel and then when uh, if you're in cruise control or something like that uh, you can just keep your foot there in the middle and it kind of rests nicely uh, seat is adjustable tilt steering wheel cruise control uh, emergency brake there all uh, you know, levers nice mechanical uh, options um, like I said, I do have the backhoe for this right now. It's kind of it's all winterized and, and tucked away up on a platform I don't really use it obviously much and being in Connecticut ground gets frozen can't do much with it So I have a, uh, a carry-all that I put on the back in addition to um, a scraper blade for the snow if, if it gets to that point So going into a few things that I like um, you know, Just get up here up on the operator station so I do like the um, 
operator station. It's very ergonomic. I had the seat pushed all the way back. I'm about five foot nine myself. Um, but working in the, in the winter time, I have um, generally a, a you know Carhartt style full body suit on and work uh, snow boots and gloves and all that kind of stuff. And it's just nice, it's open, it's comfortable. Um, you know, everything is, is easily accessible here with uh, my foot, if I wanted to tilt the steering wheel down. Very easy, uh, same thing with the cruise control. I can be operating it here with my foot uh, going forward and then just push it up and let it go. Um, and then also the emergency brake as well. Everything I don't have to, there's not a lot of, of maneuvering that I have to do as, as the operator itself. So um, throttle is again, very easy to control here. Clutch pedal there for, um, they use it with your, your PTO. Um, also you have to use it when you engage your four wheel drive. Um, just a fun fact, when you're engaging your hydrostat, you do not actually have to engage the clutch um, you do have to come to a full stop though or else it'll make a nice grinding noise for you um, hazard lights here low medium uh, low and high high beams there uh, left turn signal right turn signal as well um, two things that i did add were a usb charger here for your phone uh, it has a one amp two amp it's just a marine style that i got off of amazon and, and just hardwired it in there in addition to a uh, uh, outlet uh, 12 volt outlet plug style there um, the what I found very odd was the lower series in addition to the higher series seemed like they all had either a 12 volt or a USB plug but uh, for some reason the 1626 didn't even though the description uh, on my hinders website says they did so I just went ahead and added those and it was a nice perfect place to put it you can uh, easily get behind the dashboard here and just wire it up the side going to the to the front where the fuse box is um one other thing that i added and i'll just turn around here so you guys can see it um i did add some work lights wiring's not pretty um i have to finish that up but um they are uh, i do have two going to the front and one going to the back makes a huge difference um going into one of the things that i'm not a huge fan on i guess it's while the updated style lights are you know nice they're not horrific but um they're also uh not uh spectacular either so this is uh the high beam there you can see it's just got a kind of a yellow tinge to it so um the led work lights definitely help uh in the dark and anytime we get a snowstorm at night whatnot um helps to uh get that taken care of um so i really uh some other things that i really like going back to the seat um the seat is very comfortable um that coupled with the loader joystick on the thigh um really makes for a, a user-friendly um design and, and ergonomically it's very comfortable um make, i can spend my whole day on the seat and really not be sore getting off of it and, and get a lot done um, frankly, when you spend the kind of money that you're spending on tractors, um, it amazes me that people still um, put the joystick up here, up on the loader, in addition to having a seat without armrests. Um, to me, those two just kind of go hand in hand when you're when you're working a, with a tractor. Um, the bucket itself, um, while it does work, to me it kind of looks. I guess you could say either cheap or just kind of like a half-ended design, so to speak. Kind of like, oh, you know, we don't want to do too much redesigning. Um, I think something else that went into it was if the bucket was fully uh, symmetrical or a one consistent volume from the front to the back, Mahindra may have lost their ability to quote-unquote claim lift capacity. So right now they say that you can put um a full thing a trap rack on this and lift it up um, without a problem and i can attest to that um but it definitely i think that may have been another thing is they wouldn't have been able to claim that and that's just my own speculation but um definitely uh, not a fan of the look of the loader bucket itself um but it works just fine and and uh, does the job Going back here to the three-point hitch, I'm just going to lower the carry-all for you, so you guys can see. Um, definitely is beefy. Um, excuse the, the dirt and, and, and grime, um, but I've had 
um, some very large logs in the carryall and it's lifted it without any problems. Um, taking the backhoe on and off is a breeze. The only pain I will say or only a little nitpick is you do have to take the three point arms off. Um, I saw somewhere on a forum that somebody was actually able to manipulate it so they didn't have to do that. I'm um, still trying to figure that out and I'll probably figure that more out in the spring when I um, use the backhoe. But right now it, I haven't been able to figure out a way to keep the three point hitch arms on in addition to having the backhoe there because that would save me probably about five to ten minutes. Um, and it's more or less just trying to find the linchpins that really uh, puts a damper on it. So. Other than that, it's really easy to maneuver um, and hook up implements. Haven't had any problems with that. Um, going back here up to the toolbox area. So when you buy the tractor and you spend all that money on the tractor and they give you a little chintzy piece of junk plastic one. So I had actually been gifted this uh, toolbox from Tractor Supply and went ahead and it just has two bolts underneath it. So, or two threaded holes, excuse me. So I went ahead and just marked out the holes and drilled those through the toolbox and put two bolts in and threaded them in and away they went. And it definitely makes it so I can carry um, a lot more. Um, only problem is when uh, the seat's all the way back, I have a tendency to, to run into it. Um, as far as the lift capacity goes, just to kind of give you guys an example, um, looking back here, I've got a bunch of different oak, birch, um, black walnut uh, logs that I've been able to lift. And a lot of these have been two, three at a time, and this thing hasn't even broken a sweat. Um, a lot of my hours have been backhoe work. So I have a um, very wooded lot in the front with a lot of pine trees. Um, and these are just some of them here over to the side. And I dug the stumps, um, both dug the stumps and also dug around the, the, the base of the tree and then pushed it over with the backhoe and then hauled that away as one full uh, full tree and um, very impressive with what this backhoe has been able to do. So far I've only had one issue um, that was covered under warranty and, and they actually overnighted me apart so that I wasn't um, without but this Underneath this boot here uh, for the loader valve is the loader valve itself and you can kind of see it peeking out under here. That is, um, has two pistons that when you move this, they, they actuate accordingly. There's a seal kit in there. Um, so what happened is it, it seems like one, something got in there, dirt, grime or whatnot, or maybe it had been a scored cylinder, who knows. Um, but when I lifted up this boot one time, there was some hydraulic fluid that was leaking out. Um, took it off, brought it to the dealer that I bought the, the tractor from, and they had uh, they didn't have one in stock, but they were able to get me one overnight um, very quickly, and I was very surprised. So um, no cost to me, um, just a, an hour drive off, out there to, to drop it off, which really wasn't uh, wasn't a big deal. Um, other than that, I you know these here, um, I get a good picture of that for you. Um, those valves there, or those quick disconnects, I had hit one with a branch and it was leaking, so I just, excuse me, had to tighten it up. But other than that, no, uh, no problems with th with this engine. The the three cylinder Mitsubishi diesel really runs well. Um, it's, I've been hearing very good things about these diesel engines. Um, you can see I've got some dust in there, but. Um, one thing you do have to watch out for, and I've been keeping up on it, is the battery terminals can corrode. So I've actually been taking a brush. Um, I should probably get some felt washers and put some uh, um, some grease on them just to keep them from corroding. But that has been one of the things that I've seen um, that people have one of the biggest issues with on, on them is, is the battery choice itself. And I believe this is the battery that came with the tractor. I don't think the dealer uh, replaced it. I know some will actually change it out for either interstate or excite or something like that. Uh, but um, just something to keep an eye on. I haven't, like I said, uh, I've been keeping up on it and haven't had a problem with it. Um, when I bought the tractor, I got all of the stuff needed for the 50 hour service. Let's go ahead and close that. Um, so, oil filters, hydraulic filter, um, hydrostatic filter. So the hydrostatic filter is actually over here underneath and you can kind of see it there peeking out underneath that hose. Get the focus, yeah, right there. Um, so that one's actually not too bad to get to. It's kind of a pain. Um, and then the hydrostatic 
filter is, or hydraulic filter, excuse me, is right there. So very easy to get to. Um, it actually is also well protected. I've been through the trees and brush and all that and really haven't uh, run into any problems. Um, one of my other gripes with the tractor is, um, this is the exhaust port here. And if I zoom out and kind of angle it correctly, you can see exactly what it's pointing at. So while there's no stack that comes out through the, the hood itself, um, this the stack that comes out of here, it blows right on the loader arm. Um, and it's something that probably three inches of, of extra um, exhaust pipe or just a slightly different angle um, could fix. Um, but uh, it's just a pain because um, as soon as I start it up, it blows smoke on it and all that kind of stuff. So it just dirties up the loader arms. And it's one other thing that I got to... Um, clean on it uh, i'm trying to see if i can get some sort of pipe that can uh probably electrical conduit that can go on around that clamp on there and then point it downwards or, or re-angle it out more towards the tire itself but um just a gripe there but again doesn't actually impact the performance of the tractor um one thing you got to be really cognizant of um You'll see these bolts here for the loader frame, um, also the engine frame. Um, there's a bunch of different bolts in your manual highlights those. One of the things I've found is that Mahindra does not use Loctite, it seems, on anything. Um, I can't speak for ones that are actually bolted into the cast iron itself, but for these here, it doesn't seem like there's any kind of Loctite, so you just gotta make sure that you're, um, you keep on top of that. I think it's first 10 hours you torque everything down, then after that it's every 50. Um, so I've done it twice myself, um, and they, some, you know, may come out a little bit, but for the most part, they stay, um, relatively tight. It's just, um, I've heard horror stories of people not keeping up with those and, and not realizing it, but that's what I've been able to find so far is no, no Loctite, no lock washers. Um, if I had a mind to, I could probably, uh, put Loctite or put lock washers on there, but, um, really just haven't gotten around to it at this point um, so that's really it with the tractor itself I really haven't like I said I've, I've loved it um, it's done everything I've asked for it to do um, and I'm just gonna start it up and let you guys see the the loader arms themselves working um, I know one of the biggest questions that I've seen asked is dual functions up and dump or up and level um, so I'll just go ahead and show you guys that um, and then, uh, feel free to shoot me any questions you may have or comment and, uh, appreciate it. couple of things I didn't mention was when I was looking at buying the tractor um, I was looking at the John Deere 3033E I believe it is and then the L2501 Kubota um, wasn't a big fan of the John Deere um, so it was a toss-up between the Kubota and the Mahindra 
Um, ended up going with the Mahindra, just um, the price was better. Uh, the lift and uh, specs were better, um, both on the front end, the back end. Um, and the dealer really, and so far has held up to um, the ability to get parts quick, um, the warranty work, like I said, I've, the loader valve was, was overnighted to me. Um, so I, I haven't had any problems thus far uh, with what I've had for warranty work. Um, haven't had any issues with um, things coming to loose or breaking. Everything seems to be ergonomically placed, uh, well engineered from a, a position standpoint. So your cylinders for steering are behind your front axle. Um, everything's kind of tucked up and isn't um, open to, to getting caught on branches. And, and also I'm not using this as a, a bulldozer, but I also don't baby it either. Uh, I mean, I'm lifting up logs and um, digging holes and, and just working it for the 150 hours that I've had it. Um, it definitely has not had an easy life so far. Um, but uh, yeah, so far very happy. I would buy this this tractor over again um, if I if I had to. Um, I've been very impressed with it. Uh, just the build quality, everything's metal, um, cast steel, very very heavy, very beefy tractor. Um, so it uh, it's it's done me right and uh, have have no complaints on it right now that uh, would have keep me from bought, buying it again. All right, thanks everybody, appreciate it, and uh, happy new year.